want to welcome everyone to the fourth installment of Eyes Wide Shut. I appreciate the love, the support, the comments, the feedback. Thank you. Please keep a like, commenting, subscribing, and also leave in the comments um, any other topics or subjects that you would like me to do a deep dive in or cover. Just let me know. And if you would like to be a, a guest on the, you know, the Eyes Wide Shut installment, you know, also drop a comment and let me know. Now, today um, we are living in troubling times. You know, Daniel said in the last days, knowledge will be increasing. And well, the veil is starting to be pulled back, leaving the world to be exposed. We are going to be discussing a couple things here. Our space, galaxy, constellations, or whatever you want to call it, according to the word of God, it's the heavens. So I asked this question, why is everything in it named after a Greek god? Zodiac signs included. Why is that? And this is something that is taught by our educational system as well, to put these things in place. So we're going to only cover a few, just enough to encourage you all to do your own research. And do not take what I say for granted. We are revealing the matrix, aka Satan's womb, one layer at a time. And before you walk through this door, please put on your spiritual glasses and open your mind. Now for starters, our eight planets, it was nine when I was growing up in school, now it's eight. Our eight planets are named after little G gods, Roman Greek mythology. So we're gonna start off with Mercury. Mercury, which is Hermes, the Greek god, or in Roman, which is Mercury, was the god of translators and interpreters. He was the most clever of the Olympian gods and served as messenger for all the other gods. He ruled over wealth, good fortune, commerce, fertility, and thievery. Now Venus in Roman or Aphrodite in Greek mythology was one of the 12 gods of Olympias. She was the goddess of love, beauty, and procreation. As such, she was the most beautiful amongst the gods and was almost always followed by Cupid, aka Eros. Now Earth, aka Gaia, which is the mother of all life. She is the mother of Uranus, the sky, from whose sexual union she bore the Titans, themselves parents of many of the Olympian gods, the Cyclopes and the Giants, as well as Pontus, the sea, from whose union she bore the primordial sea gods. Her equivalent in the Roman pantheon was Terra. Now you see why they use the term Mother Nature. Mars, which is Ares in ancient Rome religion, was the god of war and also an agricultural guardian, a combination characteristic of early Rome. Now Jupiter, which is Zeus in Greek religion, was the chief deity of the pantheon, a sky and weather god who was identical with the Roman god Jupiter. His name may be related to that of the sky god Dias of the ancient Hindu, Rigveda. Now Saturn, Roman myth Saturn was identified with the Greek Cronus. He was exiled from Olympus by Zeus. He ruled Latium in a happy and innocent gold age, where he taught his people agriculture and other peaceful arts. Now Uranus, the personification of the sky and one of the Greek primordial deities, according to Eosad, Uranus was the son and husband of Gaia, aka Earth. Now Neptune was the Roman god of water and the sea. It was very similar to the ancient Greek god Poseidon. He had two brothers, Jupiter, the god of the sky, and chief of the Roman gods, and Pluto, the Roman god of the dead. Neptune was often shown carrying a trident, a three-pronged spear used for catching fish. Now, does this sound familiar? Devil in the pitchfork? Okay, so our eight planets are all named after Greek, Roman, Egyptian gods and I just have to question myself why 
Um, we also have 88 constellations. I'm not going to go over all of them. But I'm just going to list a few, mainly the zodiac signs, just to let you know where we all get them from. And uh, which is basically who our uh, sky stars are named after. So I do have Draco. You know, Draco was named after Landon, the hundred headed dragon that guards the garden of Hesperides. In fact, Landon was the dragon was slain by poison arrows in one of Hercules' 12 labors. Next, we have Gemini, which is named after immortal mythological twins, their father by Apollo, Castor, and Pollux. Next, we have Hercules, which is also one of our constellations in the sky. Now, we do know in legend, Hercules was a strong man and hero of Greek mythology. And Hercules is one of the oldest constellations in our night sky, dating back to ancient Sumerian civilization. We also have Hydra. Now, Hydra is the largest of the 88 recognized constellation, was the mythological monster from Hercules' 12 labors. Leo depicts the Nemean lion of Greek mythology slain by Hercules by his 12 labors. Next, we have the Libra literally meaning weighing scales. Now, Libra represents the scales of justice held by Dyke, the Greek goddess of justice. Orion. Now, Orion is um, Horus. And uh, we all know that he was Egyptian, Greek god, Rome god as well. He also has, a we have like Orion's belt. That's what that is named after of. So, yeah. And I'm just going to drop a couple facts they say the Earth's speed is 66,627 miles per hour. Hmm, 666. They say the sun age is 4.603 billion years old, and the moon is, is 4.5 billion years old. And the angle of the Earth's axis with the vertical is 23.5 degrees. Now, its angle with the orbital plane, or horizontal is 66.5 degrees so thus we can say the earth is tilted at 66.5 degrees now we do like our space missions are named after apollo you know you have the apollo 11 the apollo 13 now apollo or apollyon is one of the olympian deities in classical greek and roman religion and Greek and Roman mythology. Now, the national div divinity of the Greeks, Apollo has been recognized as a god of archery, music, dance, truth, and prophecy, healing, and diseases, the sun, light, poetry, and more. Now, one of the most important and complex of the Greek gods, he is the son of Zeus and Leto, and the twin brother of Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Now, he is seen as the most beautiful god and ideal of the Koros. Now, Apollyon is also mentioned in Revelation 9-11. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. But in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. And that is what our uh, space missions are named after of. Apollo also want to get into this article that I thought was really interesting. Um, it was an article, it is an article that the uh, Washington Times written. And I believe this article was back in 2011. No, I'm sorry. It was in the year 2000. Now the title of this article is Masonic Founders May Have Oriented Washington Around Virgo. So it kicks off like this. Every August 10th, astrological event takes place in the sky over Washington that some say ties the city to a pagan goddess. If the horizon remains cloudless, three stars are visible in a straight line from the Capitol to the White House to the skies in the West. Known as Regulus, Arturus, and Spica. The stars form a right-angled triangle framing the constellation of Virgo. 
This is because Washington's founders deliberately aligned the city with the stars, consecrating it to Virgo, also known as the Egyptian goddess Isis. Now, British author David Ovasen says in his new book, The Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital, he says, you rarely found a sunset leading to a rising of the stars. Washington is unique and it's magical when it happens. The stars emerged from the dusk. In Greece and Egypt, temples and sacred sites were oriented toward the stars. But I know of nowhere else in the earth where a city is oriented toward a specific sunset. He says the initiation into the Masonic order includes a rite known as the Mysteries of Isis. The Masonic book Morals and Dogma links Isis with Virgo, often portrayed on the city's statuary as a woman bearing a sheaf of wheat. As a former art lecturer and a specialist in symbolism, Mr. Ovasen tried diving into the founding fathers' minds to summarize their intents as they laid out this new city, Washington. His first step was to realize that almost all of the men who surveyed and laid out Washington were Masons. Now, the author's research turned up 23 important zodiacs in the city, many on official buildings. The chances of the correspondence being more coincidence are so remote that we must assume that whoever was directing the planning of Washington, D.C. not only had a considerable knowledge of astrology, but had a vested interest in emphasizing the role of the sign Virgo. So basically, he's saying... They put much emphasis in this goddess Virgo that they wanted everything aligned up with it perfectly. Now, I'm going to put a screenshot up here. So if you all want to check out the rest of this article, you can. It was written in the year 2000 and it's some pretty good information in there. Astrology. What is it? Is there truth to it? Is this something that you should look to to guide your life, to guide the decisions you make? to to help you improve the state of your life or is it completely false actually demonic and something that you should extremely take care and stay away from well basically astrology is the study of how the planets interact with our consciousness it's how the planets the the rotation of the planets around the earth and the distance they are from us how it interacts with our consciousness our emotions our life and who we are at a soul level so people when they go through an astrology reading will get a natal chart this is the chart of the planet's locations at the exact time in which you were born the exact day the exact year even the hour and the minute it'll tell you which planets were moving away from the earth in retrograde where they were on the 360 degree axis in relation to the earth it'll tell you things about the sun which actually most people when they say oh i'm a cancer i'm a libra i'm a leo that's just their sun sign then you have a moon sign then you have all the signs for every other planet then you have houses too there's 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 a lot more to astrology than just one sign your horoscope what what have you and there's even spirits and entities involved that people communicate with that you have a sign attached to an entity like lilith but the natal chart will tell you oh you're a very generous person you're a very loving and, and quiet person and you're meant to in this lifetime pursue a degree in more of a research analytical field and that you are going to uh, most you're most compatible with a partner who's very fiery and energetic and outspoken and it'll tell you all these things about your life who you're meant to be what your destiny is um who you were even in past lives because the entire concept of astrology is built around the concept of reincarnation so there you go you know the bible says it's appointed for man once to die then the judgment there is no reincarnation folks but if you believe in astrology you believe that you continue progressing and learning specific life spiritual lessons in your soul to progress to higher levels so you'll continue through the signs you'll start at one degree that means you're very young in that sign if you're a one degree cancer you're very young as a cancer and you need to learn what the cancer sign needs to learn then you'll move on to the next sign once you hit 30 degrees because there's 12 horoscope signs there's 12 astrological zodiac signs that are 30 degrees each to sum up to a total of 360 degrees 
So the natal chart is very complex. There's people who study this astrology and horoscopes for, you know, thousands of years. There's truth through astrology. There's truth through astronomy. Like I said, one of the truths is that women are intimately connected with the lunar cycles. Physiologically, women go through their menstrual cycles according to the lunar cycles that the moon undergoes. There is truth to the planetary objects affecting our consciousness, affecting our bodies. But does it go to the extent that, hey, you're meant to do this career, or this is your personality, or this is who you should marry? No, that's completely demonic. That has no basis in reality. That has no basis in fact or science. And it's extremely superstitious, extremely superstitious. But it gives people a feeling that they know who they are, that they're connected to the universe, that they're intimately tied with the planets and the solar system and the cosmos. You know, it feels amazing to be a, a human, not just on earth, who, who loves nature, who loves the ocean, who loves the mountains, who loves, you know, being connected to the earth, but you're connected to the cosmos, the great reality, and you're in tune with the planetary frequencies and their effect on your consciousness and your life. And you feel like you're this, you know, divine, spiritual, enlightened being connected to the universe and looking at all these other people who are just going to work and wearing, you know, a suit and a tie and not knowing the great cosmos that they're in, involved in. So it lures you in through that. It lures you in and then you start looking at these horoscopes literally every morning thinking this is how I need to live my day because the planets are in these locations. You're watching weekly updates, daily updates, monthly updates. What are the planets doing right now? How can I take advantage of this to improve my life, to um, choose the right partner, to get into the right business, to be financially blessed? You start right alone. Now, Warner Von Braun was a German Nazi. He came over after World War II in Operation Paperclip. He, along with other German scientists. Now, Werner von Braun was the head of NASA. That's who named all the space missions. Now, he directed all six uh, space flights to the moon. I believe there are two forces which move us. One is believe in the last judgment when every one of us has to account for what he did with God's great gift of life on the earth. The other is belief in an immortal soul, a soul which will cherish the award or suffer the penalty decreed in a final judgment. Belief in God and in immortality thus gives us the moral strength and the ethical guidance we need for virtually every action in our daily lives. In our modern world, Many people seem to feel that science has somehow made such religious ideas untimely or old-fashioned. But I think science has a real surprise for the skeptics. Science, for instance, tells us that nothing in nature, not even the tiniest particle, can disappear without a trace. Think about that for a moment. Once you do, your thoughts about life will never be the same. Science has found that nothing can disappear without a trace. Nature does not know extinction. All it knows is transformation. Now if God applies this fundamental principle to the most minute and insignificant parts of his universe, doesn't it make sense to assume that he applies it also to the masterpiece of his creation, the human soul? I think it does. And everything science has taught me and continues to teach me, strengthens my belief in the continuity of our spiritual existence after death. Nothing can... So back to Walt Disney, it is said that the Disney logo itself, if you look closely, it is a world underneath a globe with a rocket breaking out of the firmament. Now when Warner Von Braun died on his tombstone was Psalm 19.1. So... After taking a look at all, taking a look at a few of these clips, and just going through the constellation, going through um, our planet, you can see that um, you can see that our elites are really heavy into this pagan god goddess worship, and it's not of God. It really isn't. 
You know, they put this in our education system, you know, in our books. And this is something that we have to, um, I remember doing some brief Greek mythology in school. We had tests on it. Um, they didn't teach about Jesus in school. We didn't do any um, tests on Jesus in school, but they uh, ushered in this Greek mythology. And um, yeah, it just makes you wonder. And I'll go back to like, are we in some type of, it feels like we're in some type of superhero movie, some type of cartoons. And guys, I reveal this information not so you can have the worldly knowledge, but with hopes that you will continue to lean on the Lord and trust his word. This is what he was saying in, in, in the word of God. All of this is there. Now to drop you with some scriptures, Isaiah 47, 13 through 14. You are wearied in the multitude of your consuls. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly pronosticators stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. Jeremiah 10, 2. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. Job 9, 4 through 9. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and prospered. He removes the mountains and they do not know. When he overturns them in his anger, he shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. He commands the sun and it does not rise. He seals off the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He made the bear, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. Now in that, he's basically saying, did all these stars, these constellations, the sun and the moon, who do you think made that? They move on his command. But yet, we have worshipers, astrologers, that are really heavy into this. I mean, come on now, they... They name our uh, zodiac signs, our birth dates after it. So, again, guys, I hope you. I hope this intrigues you to do further research and to lean on the Word of God. And if you aren't in the Word of God, please get into it. Don't trust in the world. The world trusts in other things. The world is being corrupted by man with false ideology, false worship, witchcraft, whatever you want to name it, it's there. But the word of God is cemented. The word of God never changes. Jesus said, come come to me and I will give you rest. So guys, may peace and love be upon you.